Okay, so now we come to quite an important uh, part of your repertoire for solving equations. Um, it's, it's unlikely to come up very often, but uh, you need to definitely uh, bear it in mind. Okay, so you should all be comfortable by now if you see anything like this. Uh, this is, well, just a quadratic equation. Okay, you've got a few methods of solving it. Um, it should be simple enough. Um, but uh, that's when you have a multiple of x squared, a multiple plus a multiple of x plus a constant equals zero. Um, what about instead if you had a multiple of a whole function squared plus a multiple of that function plus a constant? Could we do that as well? Uh, well, yes, we can. Um, so what have we got here? We uh, have x to the power of 4, x squared, it doesn't look like a quadratic, but if we write it like this, if we turn x to the power of 4 into x squared squared, then suddenly this does look a bit more promising. And, uh, well, if we uh, substituted out x squared and just called x squared u temporarily, then we have 3 times u squared minus 11u minus 4. Now this is just fully a quadratic. Uh, we can solve it in any of our methods. I might use uh, I might use factoring. Although it's not the easiest one to factor and I also need to make sure I use the proper variable, u. Okay, um, so this would be the factored form. Okay, and I would solve it minus one third uh, and four. Uh, but we're not trying to solve for u, we're trying to solve for x squared. Um, so it's actually x squared that equals these things. Okay, um, but we're trying to solve for x, as the, which would be the final step. Okay, so we can square root both sides. Square root of minus a third, and square root of four. Um, and we should be look, looking at the plus or minus version of these. Now, uh, you may notice that you can't do a square root of a negative uh, to get any real solution. Um, so this would give us nothing. Uh, but we can do the square root of 4 plus or minus 2. That would be our solution. Okay, and you could go back and plug it into our original equation just to check. So 3 times 2 to the power of 4 is 48. Minus 11 times 2 squared, that's 44. Minus 4, that does equal 0. And I'm sure the other one does as well, if you plug in minus 2. Okay. So that was a fairly simple one. Uh, instead of uh, a quadratic with x, we had a quadratic with x squared, essentially. Now, um, a slightly harder example. Uh, here we have... Uh, well, we have e to the power of 2x, we have e to the power of x. That is our clue that it should be a quadratic. Now, firstly, uh, it's always a good idea to get everything on one side. Then I might want to think of this as 3 times e to the power of x squared minus e to the power of x minus 4. I might substitute out e to the power of x for u again, I can use any letter. Some people like to use a, a capital X or something like that. Okay, but this would be my new quadratic. Okay, uh, again, I quite like factoring, um, but especially when you have this 3 here, many students would prefer uh, quadratic formula, I'm sure. Now, u equals
plus minus one or four thirds. Uh, but we're trying to find x. So it's actually e to the power of x that equals minus one and uh, four thirds. Now, how do we solve this? Um, so e to the power of what equals minus one? Okay, this is the same as doing log uh, log base e of minus one, or in other words, ln or ln of minus one. Uh, but you may know that you can't do the log of a negative uh, because there's no power of e that gives you negative one. Um, so the, there's no solution here, uh, quite similar to how we had no solution for square root of minus a third. Okay, but if we were trying to solve this, uh, well, this would equal ln of four thirds, and that would be our x. Okay, uh, and you could find a decimal uh, version for that. Okay, what power of e gives you four thirds? Um, but finding the, the decimal and rounding uh, is not as accurate and not as uh, desirable as just leaving it as uh, ln of four thirds. That's a perfectly acceptable answer in IB. Okay, and finally, uh, same kind of thing, but in, uh, with uh, trig now. So uh, I can probably see that this is a quadratic straight away, and maybe I'll skip a couple of steps now and just say that I'm calling sine of x uh, u. I should probably write it down there. Sine of x equals u. Okay, again, it doesn't have to be u. And again, I'm going to use factoring, but you do not have to. Quadratic form there, completing the square even. Okay, and uh, so. Uh, I always, it's always easy to slip back into writing x. I need to remember to write u. And uh, so u equals 8 thirds or minus 1 half. Um, but again, it's not u that we're looking for, it's x. So substitute back sine of x equals uh, 8 thirds or minus a half. Uh, but can sine of x equal 8 thirds? No, sine of x only goes between 1 and minus 1. Okay, um, but minus uh, 1 half is in that range. Okay, so now we're just solving this. Uh, we did miss, we should have a domain, really, that says between 0 and 2 pi, between 0 and 360. Uh, so can we solve sine of x equals minus a half? Uh, well, yeah, we should be able to. Uh, we can either use the unit circle or the graph, even. But in the sine of minus a half uh, will equal... 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6, I believe. Okay. Um, so in each one of these, only one of the initial solutions actually gave us answers. Uh, that's not necessarily always the case. Um, you could easily end up with answers coming from both of these. Um, and hence, maybe on the like on the first one, you could end up with four answers, uh, and the third one as well, you could um, end up with, well, depending what your domain is, six or eight answers. Um, but just the the main point is spotting these. That's the hard part. And uh, spotting just whenever you've got some function squared, and that function by itself, or some multiple of that function and a constant. Okay, that will be a hidden quadratic.